Hi, good morning, my dear students. I hope everybody is doing great. Let us continue the session. The last class we had discussed about kinetic energy. We are going to continue the kinetic energy. Let's start here. The name of the session is Factors Affecting Kinetic Energy. What was the kinetic energy? Expression we had learned. Kinetic energy is equal to half m v square. Right. Look at the thing. We are going to find the factors affecting the kinetic energy. If you carefully observe this, this kinetic energy is depending on a mass of an object. The same kinetic energy is also depending on velocity of an object. Is it clear? Now, imagine the situation in this expression. If m is constant, if m is constant, what happens? Then the kinetic energy is depending only on this v square. So I'm writing here when m is constant. Anyhow, this half is a constant. Clear? So kinetic energy is directly proportional to v square. Remember. Now, if v is constant, v is constant means v square also will be constant. When this term is constant, then kinetic energy is directly proportional to mass of a body. The most interesting part I am going to tell you here, if the kinetic energy is constant, right? If kinetic energy is constant, what happens? What happens? Look at here, the same equation I am going to write like this. So the kinetic energy divided by a mass which is equal to half v square. Can I write this equation in this way? So this equation in this way? Definitely I can write. Kinetic energy by mass. This mass I have brought into the left hand side. That's it. Kinetic energy by mass is equal to half V square. Now, if kinetic energy is constant. So, let me write here. If kinetic energy is constant, what happens, you know? Then there is a relation between this mass and V square. Okay. So, what is that relation? That relation will be when this is constant, I can write 1 by m is directly proportional to v square or v square is directly proportional to 1 by m. Ah, this is also can be termed as v square is inversely proportional to mass. What is that? v square is inversely proportional to mass. Is it clear? So, in this way, the relationships you can find out among three physical quantities, kinetic energy, mass and velocity. Brilliant. Now, we are going to draw the graphs among those physical quantities, right? So, the graphical representation will be very, very important in any of the JEE, CET or NEET question paper you take, some of the questions will be there related to the graph analysis, right? So, let's see here. Before moving into the graphs, I just wanted to tell you three important graphs here. There is a relation between A and B. A is directly proportional to B. How the graph can be drawn? A is directly proportional to B. The graph will be drawn in this way. Imagine this is the quantity A and this is B. The graph will be like this. A straight line passing through the origin having a constant slope. You know about the constant slope, right? This is A is directly proportional to B. Any two physical quantities are directly proportional and the graph will look like this. Clear? Now, inversely proportional, let's see. If A is inversely proportional to B, okay? So, the graph will look like this. Carefully. This is A and this is B inversely proportional. Carefully see inversely proportional. Inversely proportional graph will look like this. Okay. 
A is inversely proportional to B. This is a graph group slide. And you may get it out. For example, A is FMC. A is inversely proportional to B square. The graph will look like the same. Whatever may be the b to the power, b to the power n I am writing here. So that n value uh, may be 1, 2, 3, so on. Your graph will look like this. Right? This is what the graphical analysis you learn in mathematics. Now, if I write a is directly proportional to b square, the graph will look like this. This is A and this is B. The graph will look like this. Remember the graph. A directly proportional, inversely proportional, a single graph, and directly proportional to B square. So the graph will look like this. Okay? Now, let's understand these graphs here. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to V square. What is a graph related with? So this is a graph. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to V square. If somebody asks you to find the directly proportional graph, look at this interesting thing. So this is kinetic energy and this is V. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to V square. Okay. So this is a graph. When there is a condition, when there is a mass constant. So when uh, there is mass constant. Okay. Now, kinetic energy is directly proportional to mass. Directly proportional to mass, it is in the form of A is directly proportional to B. So kinetic energy is directly proportional to mass, I'm writing here. So this is kinetic energy and this is mass. So where it is directly proportional. Is it clear? So in this way graphical analysis can be done. And you can draw the graph between this also and where kinetic energy is constant. So that's why I'm not drawing the graph here. But this is kinetic energy is directly proportional to mass when, when V is constant. When V is constant. That must be mentioned. Okay. Clear? We'll see. Another concept now. My dear students, you all know about kinetic energy and linear momentum, right? In the last classes, we had learned about linear momentum. Now, let's relate the kinetic energy and linear momentum. This is the most important topic in your first POC lessons. <coughs> so, the topic is the relation between linear momentum and kinetic energy. We know this kinetic energy is half mv square and this linear momentum is mass into velocity which is denoted with the symbol p. p is a linear. How to get the relation among them? Let's see. We know the kinetic energy is equal to half m v square, right? Here, this kinetic energy, I am just multiplying and dividing with mass. Why? You will understand now. So, the same kinetic energy, I can write half into the numerator, m into m, it's m square. It's V square is already there in the numerator and denominator it will be M. Here, the same kinetic energy I can write it as half into MV whole square divided by M. Right? Half into mass into velocity, it's a linear momentum whole square. Clear? M into V is what? Linear momentum square divided by M. See the interesting relation we have got. Kinetic energy is equal to P squared by 2M. Kinetic energy is what? P squared by 2M. Where P is linear momentum, M is mass and this is kinetic energy. Right? 
and this expression is a major, the basic expression and the relation between kinetic energy and linear moment. Here, you can also write P square is equal to 2M into kinetic energy, where P is equal to square root 2M into kinetic energy. Okay, now let's concentrate on this relation. From this relation, when mass is constant, what happens? When mass is constant, when this is constant, how to is a constant, right? When mass is constant, these two expressions are directly proportional. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to P square. Okay, now when P is constant, when linear momentum is constant, the kinetic energy is inversely proportional to mass. Yes or no? Kinetic energy is inversely proportional to mass when this is constant. Kinetic energy is inversely proportional to mass. And let's write the graph, let's draw the graphs between these two. So, the kinetic energy is here and this is linear momentum. Kinetic energy, linear momentum. This is the graph represents like A is directly proportional to B square. You remember the graph. So this is the shape of the graph. Okay. Now here kinetic energy is inversely proportional to mass. So this is the kinetic energy. So this is kinetic energy and the mass. So kinetic energy is inversely proportional to mass. Right. So the inversely, inversely proportional graph will be like this. Okay. And most important point here is which is constant. When you are drawing the graph between two physical quantities, you should take care of which is constant. So in this case, kinetic energy is directly proportional to P square. What is constant here? Mass is constant. I am writing here. So here, a mass is constant. When kinetic energy and the mass are inversely proportional and linear momentum is constant. What is that? Linear momentum is constant. Come back to the previous slide. Previous slide where we had drawn between the kinetic energy and carefully see, we have drawn the graph between kinetic energy and the mass, right? Where we had got the graph like this. So you may get a doubt. So here the relation between kinetic energy and the mass, we have drawn a graph like this. But here kinetic energy and the mass, we have drawn the graph like this. Here. But both are correct. When you consider the proper constant value. Here I had clearly mentioned when linear momentum is constant, kinetic energy is like this with respect to the mass. When velocity is constant, the graph between kinetic energy and the mass will be like this because kinetic energy is equal to half mv square when v is constant kinetic energy is directly proportional to mass directly proportional to graph directly proportional to graph a is directly proportional the graph will be like this i hope you got the point right so once the session is completed you just rewind revise recap once again then start attempting your assignment questions. Clear? In this way, the relation between kinetic energy and linear momentum can be asked. Look at this. One more thing. Sometimes the questions will be asked in terms of ratios. How the questions will be asked. Let's take one again. Again, I'm telling you from the basic mathematics. When A is directly proportional to B, because some of the students have joined recently, for them I am just revising this point. If I say A is directly proportional to B, I can also say that A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2. Clear? If I write A is inversely proportional to B, I can also write A1 by A2 is equal to, as it is inversely proportional, it will be B2 by B1. If I say A is directly proportional to B square, I can also write according to the ratios, ratios of A 
is equal to ratios of B, but for the ratios of B, this whole square is mentioned, see, in this way. Don't forget this. You can apply the same in these formulas also. When mass is constant, kinetic energy is directly proportional to P square, right? Here, ratios of kinetic energy, Ke1 by Ke2 is equal to P1 by P2 whole square. Okay. A is directly proportional to B square. A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 whole square. Now, kinetic energy is directly proportional to 1 by M or kinetic energy is inversely proportional to 1 by M. So, this I can write Ke1 by Ke2 which is equal to, what is this? Inversely proportional to M. Is it in the form of A is inversely proportional to B? Yes. A1 by A2 is equal to B2 by B1. The same thing I can write. It is M2 by M1. Remember, when linear momentum is constant. Okay. So, out of this, the graphs are important. Each and every relation is important. Right? This is, this is not the 10th standard, 10th standard or 12th standard topic. It's a basic fundamental physics we are learning now. Right? So, I just wanted to share a very good news for you is in the next class onwards, we are starting the first PUC topic, exactly the first PUC topic, right? The foundations and the basic physics, I hope you are very clear with now. So, we are going to start the first PUC topic from next session itself. Next session means the next physics class itself, clear? So, let's solve some numericals based on these formally. My dear students, let's look at two basic numericals from this kinetic energy. Calculate the work done required to stop a car of mass 1500 kg moving with a velocity of 60 km per hour. All right. So what is the mass of the car given? 1500 kg. And it's moving with a velocity of 60 km per hour. And it's clearly mentioned that work done required to stop a car. Stop means final velocity is zero. Here itself you should write. We know the formula for the work done when its velocities have mentioned here. Initial velocity is this one and the final velocity is this. When there is initial and final velocities have mentioned, we have discussed according to a work energy theorem. W is equal to half m v square minus u square. I hope you could recollect this equation, work energy theorem. So work done is equal to half into, what is the mass here? Mass is 1500 kilogram into a v square. It's a zero square minus u square. It's an important point. So here, initial velocity is given as 60 kilometer per hour. You can convert this kilometer per hour into meter per second. How? We had discussed already why we need to convert and how to convert. The two things are very important. Why we need to convert all other units are in meters per second and that means SI units and here it is SI unit. So that's the reason we need to convert this also into SI unit. For that we have to do 5 by 18, multiply the 16 to 5 by 18, you get into meter per second. Alright, 6 threes and 6 tenths. Okay, initial velocity is how much? 50 by 3 meters per second. The same thing I can write here. It's 50 by 3 whole square. Clear? V square is 0 square and it is 50 by 3 whole square. Now, so W is equal to 1 by 2 into 1500 into minus 50 into 50 by 9. Minus, we just take to the other side. So W is equal to so this is 2, the 750s, minus 750 by 9 into 50 into 50. So if you solve all these things and you get it minus 208.33 kilojoule, okay. 
So this is how the numericals will be solved. And I remember we had discussed similar type of question in the last class also. Now, look at this. See, and one more thing. So you do not get confused with the negative sign. The negative sign indicates the force is acting in opposite direction of the motion of the body. That's the reason the body will stop after some time. Okay, now. Kinetic energy of an object of mass m and mass is m. It's moving with a velocity 5 meters per second is 25 joules. What is the kinetic energy? 25 joules. Kinetic energy is given, velocity is given, the mass is not given. You can calculate mass by using kinetic energy expression. What is the kinetic energy expression? Half mv square. What is kinetic energy? 25 is equal to half into mass into v square. v square is 5 square. It's also 25. Alright. So the 25, 25 cancel here. When 2 comes to the other side, so mass of an object is 2 kilogram. What is the mass of an object here? 2 kg. Okay. They are not asking us to find the mass, but still we found because there are three physical quantities in the expression kinetic energy, mass, wealth. Three physical quantities. Now, out of these three, two are given directly. You, you, you have to get an idea that if I substitute these two quantities here, I will get the other quantity. So, other quantity we have got. Let's read the question further. What will be its kinetic energy when the velocity is doubled? Mass of an object will remain the same. Velocity is doubled. So let's see. Velocity is doubled means initial velocity is 5. Now the velocity is doubled. Right? 2 times. That means 5 into 2. It's 10 meters per second. Let's find kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is half into mass it's 2 into v square 100 times square it is 100 okay 2 2 cancel how much it's 100 joules what is the kinetic energy 100 joules now and they have asked what is the final what is the kinetic energy when the velocity is doubled I'm going to tell you one more important thing, how the same question can be asked. Listen to me carefully. Velocity is increased how much? Two times. Kinetic energy is increased how much? You check. The initial kinetic energy is 25 joule. Now the kinetic energy is how much? 100 joules. Okay. When the velocity is doubled, the kinetic energy will become four times. You understand? Velocity is doubled. Five becomes ten. Doubled. Kinetic energy becomes 4 times. You can see here 25, it's 100. 4 times. That's called quadrupled. Right? Now, let's see the further part of the question. What will be its velocity when it is increased 3 times? So now the velocity is 3 times 5, 2 times is 10 and 3 times will be 15 meters per second and the kinetic energy is equal to half into m. Mass will not change. I said 2 into v square it's 15 square is 225 so now the kinetic energy is 225 joules clear yeah. this way questions will be asked right let's solve some more questions look at the another example my dear students example number three In most of the times, this is the question was asked in previous exams. What is the question is? There are two masses. They have mentioned masses are M1 and M2. Both the bodies are moving. Okay. So both the body are a move. With the same kinetic energy. Remember, with the same kinetic energy. So you need to note this point. With the same kinetic energy, they are moving, but their masses are different, M1 and M2. The question is, find 
the ratio of their linear momenta. Linear momentum is a singular. When you need to mention the plural form, it's called linear momenta. The ratio of the linear momentum. Ratio of linear momentum. This is our aim. Okay. The ratio of linear momentum. P1 by P2 is how much? Most of the students will have confusion that which equation to be considered. Because kinetic energy and the masses, we have so many equations, right? So kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. Can I consider this equation? No, because they are asking the ratio of linear momentum. If there is no linear momentum is involved here. Here you will understand why we had converted the linear momentum, why we had converted the kinetic energy expression into linear momentum, right? So why to solve such this kind of problems? Kinetic energy is P squared by 2M. Okay. Now, when this is constant, I have given you, when this is constant, what happens? When this is constant, carefully see, when this is constant. So this expression, I can write into like this, 2M into kinetic energy, which is equal to P squared. What they told? Kinetic energy is constant. So that means anyhow the 2 is constant. So what is remained in the left hand side? Only the mass in the right hand side. It's a P square, right? So these two are directly proportional. Carefully see the equation. When M is directly proportional to P square, I can also write M1 by M2 is equal to P1 by P2 whole square. But what I need, I don't want P1 by P2 whole square. I need only P1 by P2. Then, then both the sides you apply square root. When I apply square root both sides M1 by M2, it's square root P1 by P2 whole square. See? What I have done, I have just applied square root on both sides. What happens here? So square and square root cancel. So what is the final answer I got? P1 by P2 is equal to, see the right hand side, there is only P1 by P2 now, which is equal to square root M1 by M2. Is it clear? Very, very, very important question. Right? The relation between linear momentum ratios and the masses. Kinetic energy is equal to P square by 2M. Remember this formula. Now, here the kinetic energy concept maximum we have faced. Whatever the basics are required for us, that is faced. The same way, anyhow we are going to start the first POC topic in the next class. We are finishing the potential energy also. It's so simple, the potential energy As we are not going into the deep concepts of potential energy, because these are the basics we are learning. Here, the energy possessed by the body due to its position or height, that's a potential. There are two types of potential energy. We have elastic potential energy and the gravitational potential energy, two types. In most of the cases, we use the gravitational potential energy, except in few cases that we'll be learning in the later. So most of the potential energy we term as a gravitational potential energy, and this is the gravitational potential energy which is equal to mgh. Is it clear? Gravitational potential energy is what? mgh. Now, what is this mgh? I'll tell you carefully. So this is the ground. From the ground, there is a body of mass m is taken to some height h. The body of mass m is taken to some height h okay from here to here from the ground to some height h i have to do some work then right to 
take this body or to raise the height of the body from the ground to some height, I need to do some work there. From the beginning of this session, I am telling you how much work you do, the same amount of energy will be consumed. I hope you remember it. How much work you do, the same amount of energy will be consumed. See, to bring this body from here to here, I need to do some work done. That amount of work done will be converted into the form of energy. As I am raising the body, as I am changing the position of the body, so here there is a energy stored in the body that's called potential energy. And that potential energy is mgh where m is mass of this body g is acceleration due to gravity 10 meter per second square i've told you once again i already have told you it may be 9.8 or 10 depends on the given question you need to consider now h is the amount of height i have taken for example potential energy stored in a body is 20 joule okay Height I have taken is just 10 meters and acceleration due to gravity you take 10 meter per second square. The question is find a mass of the body. Is it clear? This way questions will be asked. So potential energy is how much? We need to use this equation. Potential energy is equal to mgh. What is potential energy given? 20 is equal to mass is not given. G is 10. Height is also 10. Okay. So now how to do that? So 1 0 a 0 cancel. 2 5s are 10. So 1 is equal to m into 5. So from here m is equal to 1 by 5 kilogram. Like this questions will be asked. Now one thing you should remember in potential energy always is the H, what I am considering here, it's a displacement. Understand why it is called displacement. To the same height, I can take the body in different ways. From here to here, I can take the body in different heights and in different ways and different path. First path, I can take the body to this way. Second path, I can take the body in this way, in this way and finally reach to here. Third path, I can take the body in this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, finally reach here. Whatever may be the path taken, the potential energy is M into G into H only. That H is the displacement, the shortest path between initial and final points. Remember, okay, clear. Now, take some time for your preparation. Do your assignment very well based on today's session. And next physics class you will be learning the first PUC exclusive topic we are going to start all the very best.